Good morning, everyone. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thanks for joining us for Nine on the Positive Side. Communities coming together to help their own is what makes the East so special. And it's on full display at the Chicot School in Greenville, where an art class led to t-shirts, and t-shirts could change the life for one of the students there, this little girl, Clara Thompson. She's a miracle. <laughs> Maybe it's her laugh. She lights up a room. You always know when Clara's there. That instantly connects someone to six-year-old Clara Thompson. Always enthusiastic to be here. She really helps the other kids be better. This uplifting little girl has every reason to be enthusiastic. She actually was not predicted to live um, past four days and was diagnosed at about six months old with a rare genetic condition. Clara was born with holes in her heart and diagnosed with distal 18Q micro deletion. Her body just glitches sometimes. It kind of it goes offline almost like a computer does. They were told Clara would never walk or talk. In some ways they're right because instead of walking she dances. Uh, river dancing is her new skill and instead of talking she loves to sing. It's here in Mrs. Bellow's art class where Clara is doing what others thought might be impossible. I want to teach the kids that they can use their talents to encourage others and to be kind to others. It's that beautiful message Mrs. Bellow decorated her students with. We are a community school. The parents and the kids all rally around each other and help each other out. That's why they created a fundraiser selling this t-shirt made by a student. I'm a shirt. It's going to save up when my son was young. Hopefully selling 500 shirts. It's going to be really awesome to get my dog. Changing this family's life. From the time that she first presents with an issue until when her heart stops, we've timed at 37 minutes. This dog gets ahead of these crashes and can alert us, depending on what might be causing them, hours in advance. And she stays out of the hospital. We're not caught off guard. We're not caught by surprise anymore. Clara in this community is amazing. We have all the information about where you can donate to Clara's GoFundMe on our website, WNCT.com. A family is looking for help finding the man they say saved their son's life. Here's what happened. The Mansfield family was in the drive through line at this Bojangles on North Heritage Street in Kinston. 12 year old Weston says he was playing with his sister when he choked on a bottle cap. His mom, Jamie, pulled into one of these spots and did the Heimlich. She says Weston wasn't talking or breathing at that point. She started screaming for help. A man who was on the drive through line got out of his car, did the Heimlich, and out came the bottle cap. Jamie says in the shock of it all, she didn't get the man's name. The family wants to show the Good Samaritan their appreciation. I just really want to find this guy just to say, you know, thank you for saving his life, really. I mean, the Lord knew. That man needed to be at Bojangles at that moment. So um, I just, I would really just love to say thank you and buy him some Bojangles if that's the case. Just to, you know, show our appreciation. God was trying to help me do all that, and you know, you know, he has a plan for me, so he was trying to help me out. Weston is doing okay. His dad Cody made this post on the Facebook page Kinston Word of Mouth in hopes of finding the man who helped Weston. You can see it has more than a thousand likes. We have more information about the story, including where to contact the family on our website, WNCT.com. I donate canine fish because I want to protect the canines. 12 year old Brady Sanofsky is on a mission to raise money to buy bulletproof vests for police dogs. The vest helps shield dogs vital organs, but each one costs $1,200 or more an expense that's out of reach for many police departments. Brady's canine fund has raised the money to send vests to 546 working dogs in 37 states. He's raised more than a half a million dollars so far. If you need a pick me up, well, this might do the trick. Take a look at this by day. Officer Decker is a school resource officer, but at night the badge comes off and he's just someone completely different. In a video posted on the town of Yuque Varina's police department Facebook page, you can see Officer Decker just showing off his dancing skills in the back. He was performing with the Willow Spring High School dance team. The police department said on Facebook, Decker got to realize his dream by helping the dance team.
and this story might make you smile. Let's talk about Mondays. There's just really something about them, right? Usually on Monday mornings, people are still wishing for just one more day of rest. Four year old Landry really shared his thoughts about how he feels about Monday. You can see him right there as Haley Tucker shares is why he's getting a lot of attention. A red carpet should have been laid out. This Andover four year old has gone viral and he knows it. How does it feel to be basically like a local celebrity? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Yeah. Is the fame getting to you? Yeah. <laughs> a moment you may relate to captured on the family security camera. Four year old Landry King clearly doesn't want to deal with the preschool Monday blues. When he's really tired, he gets a bit grumpy and then, then it gets way over dramatic. I saw somebody comment that, that growing up was learning how to do that in your head instead of in physical form, and uh, that's exactly right. I think we all feel like this on Monday, and I think that's why it's so relatable, um, is to see the bus and just be like, I can't do it today. Landry says that's exactly what happened. Yeah, but I just had to put on my mask, so I, I did like this. Just so tired, I laid on the block. His parents say the real heroes are the bus staff. My intent for sending it was just to say thank you for her patience in dealing with a four year old. He's got all of his energy back now, but he told me when he first watched the video. I said, that's not funny. <laughs> you don't think it's funny. Yeah. You were tired. Yeah. So the next time you've got a serious case of the Mondays, Landry hopes you may try this maneuver for yourself. In Andover, Haley Tucker, Eyewitness News. I'll have to give that a try. U.S. Airman returns to home. Coming up on Not on the Positive Side, a look at the heartwarming surprise homecoming. And a little later. And that's when I asked the question, how many of you all have never seen snow before? This t-shirt's mission to bring snow to Florida. We'll tell you more about Lucky and if he survived his adventure. Welcome back. It's been four long years since a U.S. Airman set foot in his home state of Indiana. He surprised his two brothers at their elementary school. Mike Sullivan was there for the emotional surprise reunion. Thank you. Two words often used, rarely enough. As a child, it becomes a fundamental manner. But when your brother is in the military, thank you takes on a new meaning. It's been about four years, uh, a little bit over four years since I've been home. Staff Sergeant Austin Gallagher is an airman in the U.S. Air Force. Needless to say, my dad served, my grandpa served. Their military bloodlines run deep. I've actually uh, been stationed in Honolulu, Hawaii for the last four years, so. His role is to make sure the base is always in tip top shape. Anything that goes wrong with the facility, we're out there repairing it. In his downtime. FaceTime a lot, honestly. Trying to keep a relationship with his brothers, Liam and Brayden. These guys, they grow real quick and they're younger. Brayden is in second grade, Liam fourth. Both go to school at Abraham Lincoln Elementary. They know this about their brother's job. That means he protects us. What they don't know is the chalk thank yous their classmates are making are for him. And remember, we've been talking a lot of different things in class, right? Today, they are talking hey, reunion. He, he actually didn't recognize me at first. He actually recognized my wife. Yeah, you see When he finally realized it was me, I think that's finally when it caught him, you know, the emotions. How do you guess? Seeing my brothers have the appreciation for not just my, my service. To Navy, to Marine Corps, and then Coast Guard. But for everybody's service, uh, it's really awesome. Getting to spend precious moments with family, that's pretty awesome too. In Perry Township, I'm Mike Sullivan, CBS 4 News. Now, Staff Sergeant Austin Gallagher will be home a couple more weeks. After that, he'll head to Florida, but right now he's looking forward to playing sports with his brothers. It's great for boxes, packages, and even building school projects, but some students had to figure out how to make cardboard float. 
Let's take a closer look. This is all for the annual cardboard boat regatta in Cleveland, Ohio. Every year, students are given five weeks to make a boat using only untreated cardboard and clear packaging tape. And here's the moment of truth. You're seeing it to see if their boats could make it across this 75 foot pool. Kids look forward to this. They sign up for the class just for this project. Uh, in a very short number of years, it's becoming an instant Lakewood tradition. I wish we had that in my high school. Students whose boats make it across the pool get full credit for the project. Over in Thailand now, one man is breaking records. This 102 year old is the country's oldest sprinter. And check it out, he made the sprint of his life finishing at a little over 28 seconds in a 100 meter run and setting a new record once again. He snatched more gold medals at the seniors games this year. Sometimes that's the only thing that gets us through those hard moments is knowing that there are people who love us and who love Henry and who care. Just ahead on nine on the positive side, how a Rhode Island high school is raising money for a little boy diagnosed with a rare disease. Henry. Valentine's Day has come and gone, but in Rhode Island, the love is still pouring in for a family with a big goal. They need to raise $3 million for a treatment for their little boy who has a rare neurological disorder. Sharon Hedgie has Henry's story. Sophia, Sophia. Love is in the air at Portsmouth High School. We're dividing by the point one two. But it's much bigger than Valentine's Day. <laughs> she always just knew how to put a smile on everyone's face. Oh, I bet you guys miss her a lot. Yeah. yeah. Their former vice principal still very much in the hearts and on the minds of these students. It's obvious that you left a mark on that school. That's so nice to hear. I feel emotional. It feels like three lifetimes ago that I left. Mary Saladino never imagined when she went on maternity leave in January of 2020 that she'd never come back. My husband and I were just crying. The little boy her students watched grow in her belly was diagnosed shortly after birth with a rare and severe neurological disease called alternating hemiplegia of childhood, or AHC. A frightening moment mom and dad will never forget. Is that like taking like really shallow? Shallow grass, like, <laughs> that's what it looks like. I mean, there, there aren't even words to describe what it's like to hear that not only does your child have a random illness, uh, that it's so severe that he will likely never walk or talk and that there are no treatments or cures. Henry suffers multiple seizures daily. Henry, oh, you're okay, bud. As well as paralysis, breathing issues, and painful stiffening of his body. The family moved to Boston to be close to Boston Children's, where they average a trip to the ICU every other week. Hi, Henry. Can you say hi to Shannon? But Henry is resilient. He will endure life-threatening symptoms. He'll be resuscitated. He will come out of a seizure just seconds before uh, we need to intervene. And he will laugh, or he will start giving everybody in the room kisses, or he'll start dancing, or he'll put his little hand to my mouth and kind of look at me like, whew, mom, that was a doozy, we made it. Then a year ago, a glimmer of hope for Henry's future. News of a treatment that could reduce the severity and frequency of his seizures and other symptoms. You wanna put your circle in? ASO, as it's called, would specifically target the genetic mutation that causes Henry's AHC, but it comes with a $3 million price tag, and they have to come up with the funding. We just believed that if money is our only hurdle here, we're going to find the money. Since they started the campaign in January, the family has raised over $100,000. They have to raise a million by July for the first research phase. Thanks to the students and staff at Portsmouth High, they're $700 closer, money raised by selling Valentine's Day grams. And proudly sporting red for Henry. To see my former coworkers wearing red and students, you know, it's, it's so, sometimes that's the only thing that gets us through those hard moments is knowing that there are people who love us and who love Henry and who care. Are you a jokester? even if they only knew him when he was in my belly.
It's been nearly a half a century since there was a chance of snow in the Tampa, Florida area. Today's on the road has a 100% chance of smiles. Here's CBS's Steve Hartman. It all started here at South Shore Charter Academy outside Tampa when teacher Robin Hughes opened a book about snow. It's cold. And got a frosty reception. They just had this perplexed look on their face. Then that's when I asked the question, how many of you all have never seen snow before? Seen Hands snow before. shot up. A lot of you. In classroom after classroom. Yeah, never seen snow. I saw it on a TV show. Like Ice Age, it has snow. I'm like, what is snow, people? Clearly, Robin had tapped into a desperate yearning right, that she wanted to satisfy. Good. Right. Unfortunately, it hasn't snowed in Central Florida in 45 years. Still, Robin wasn't about to let a little thing like meteorology get in her way. So she reached out to her sister in Kentucky and went full out frozen. She asked me if I want to build a snowman. Amber Estes begrudgingly agreed to ship her sister this snowman. And I said, if he makes it to Tampa, his name is going to be Lucky. He made it. He made it. <laughs> Meet Lucky. He made it. I was so excited when I opened the box. I mean, I could not wait to go in the classroom with him. So, for more than a month now, Lucky has been leaving the cafeteria freezer Lucky. ever so briefly to grant these poor, snow-deprived children their first ever opportunity Make us happy. to see, feel, and gush over the mini miracle that is a snowman. It's real snow! And as a teacher, that's what you want. You just want that joy. It's like the first time I ever saw a snowman. When I was like, first time I met Lucky, I said he's handsome like a boy. Yes. Perhaps no one is more smitten than five-year-old Momo. I love him. I knew I would kiss him. I knew it. Was that the first boy you wanted to kiss? Yes. And the second boy I'm going to kiss you my don't have dad. To, you, okay, good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bubbling joy. Wide-eyed wonder. Only a teacher could take a pile of snow, sticks, and a vegetable and somehow melt your heart. Steve Hartman, On the Road, in Riverview, Florida. On behalf of the Kidding Snow High School, I want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. Being alive to celebrate 95 years of life is a major accomplishment on its own, but even fewer people not only live to see 95, but also work. So when students at this Virginia high school heard it was Miss Evelyn Martin's birthday, they knew they had to do something. She's been working with Hanover County Schools since 2004. Students in this high school's Emerging Leaders program surprised Miss Martin with a happy birthday banner during lunch because she works in the cafeteria. A five-year-old girl from Durham is selling lemonade and she's donating all the proceeds to mothers and babies in need. Ava Lewis started a lemonade stand outside her mom's salon when she was only three years old. When she started making a lot of money, Lewis decided to give the proceeds to a women's shelter. She purchased pacifiers, diapers, and toys. Lewis has raised thousands of dollars in the past two years. I had to sell lemonade and get babies in need their stuff. So it went from a, a lemonade stand to cups to bottles and gallons. It's a great thing for someone young and have a passion to help others. You know, it's not about a money thing. It's about to give to those that need. Since her story first went viral in 2019, Lewis now has customers from all over the U.S. and even the U.K. Now, before we go, we have one last thing to show you. A four-legged friend bringing comfort to those in the classroom. Oh, she's so sweet. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for watching Nine on the Positive Side. We'll see you next weekend.